again. We are here today, this time, with multi-instrumentalist and songwriter Paul Kramer. Uh, Paul has toured with many national artists such as Dina Carter, Susie Boggess, Pam Tillis, Lori Morgan, and Travis Tritt. He's also recorded with many artists such as Buddy Spiker. Uh, who else? Sammy um, Kershaw. Yeah. And uh, rock legend Leon Russell. Uh, some of that recently. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Paul, tell us how you got started playing music. Uh, well, um, I got uh, sort of bit, bitten by the bug, as it were, yeah. when I was about 12, and uh, I started playing guitar. Okay. And uh, I started playing, you know, fingerstyle guitar, yeah. some, some Chet Atkins and James Taylor and that sort of thing. And about the time I was in high school, towards the end, a buddy of mine got into bluegrass. Mm. He got a banjo, and so I started playing the banjo. And then we got another guitar player, and we needed a mandolin <laughs> player, so I started playing the mandolin. Okay. And... Um, uh, I didn't take up the fiddle till a little bit later. I was about yeah. 25 when I started the wow. fiddle, but um, it's been a you know a progression from one thing to another, one style to another, one instrument to another, and that's amazing. And it's a uh, it's always fun. The the learning curve is always yeah. challenge yeah. and a lot of fun too. Cool. Paul, I understand that you actually studied with Jethro Burns. Tell us about that. Right. Um, Jethro was part of the comedy duo of Homer and Jethro, right. and not a lot of people uh, were uh, or are aware that they were not only very funny and gifted comedians, but wonderful and uh, really versatile musicians oh, as yeah. well. And uh, Jethro was the mandolinist hmm. in, the, in the group. And uh, at the time that uh, I was starting to, to play music, actually I was about 20, and he lived nearby, up hmm. in the Chicago area. And uh, I went to his house and, and had a series of lessons. And uh, his teaching really opened my eyes to the idea of harmony, jazz harmony. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. I'd been playing bluegrass pretty much exclusively at that time, mm -hmm. and with, as most people do with the mandolin. And, and Jethro was one of the few people, of course, that take the mandolin to that other place, oh, yeah. which is, uh, you know, the, the, the jazz context. Yeah. And um, it was just really eye-opening. He showed me a lot of uh, chord melody hmm. solos and, and how harmony works. And um, it was just a wonderful experience. And I feel wow. really fortunate to have been able to do that. Yeah. Well, Paul, it seems that everybody in Nashville and around Nashville are songwriters. Um, can you tell us there what is it? Yeah, what does it take to um, become a successful songwriter and to get a cut done by a major artist? Uh, well, there's a lot of things involved, and, and luck is a good part of it. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, when I first came to Nashville, I was pursuing the the sort of the, the music row industry side okay. of songwriting sure. a lot more than I do now. And when I first came here. I, I landed a uh, publishing deal uh, with it was with uh, Mel Tillis's company, cool. and I did get some cuts. I didn't have any hit records, and, mm -hmm. and that's a very hard thing to do. Of course, um, but um, I found myself gravitating more towards doing it for the love and for what I wanted yeah. to bring to it, rather than trying to write for the marketplace. Sure, good. And good for you. that's uh, uh, if if you're trying to have hits, that's. The, the main thing is to, mm -hmm. you've got to keep in mind what the market 
sure. is, is, is wanting. Um, there, a lot of people co-write nowadays. Mm -hmm. Um, they set up appointments sometimes months in advance, you know, and mm -hmm. it's all it's all part of a big network with publishers. Sure. And um, there are ways to get into that if you're really driven. Um, I will say, you know, some people disparage uh, maybe the quality of the songs they hear on the radio, right. or they think, "Wow, I could have written that." <laughs> well, I just want to say, it, no matter if you like or dislike what you're hearing, it's not easy to do. Sure. It's a, it's an yeah. art and a, and a talent. It takes a lot of hard work, and like I said, a certain amount of luck too. Hmm. Monkeys with car keys, that's what we are. Great apes with good taste in wine and cigars. From treetops to laptops, ain't all that far. Monkeys with car keys, that's what we are. Here's a cool lick, comes from the gypsy jazz tradition, and it goes like this. That way it gets you from a one chord to a four chord. Uh, now the picking technique involved here is uh, you do an up and then three downs. So it's up, and uh, the chords I'm using here, this is going from a one chord to a four chord. So you have a, a triad on the G, and then an A minor, and then a B flat diminished, and then a G seventh before you go up to the C. Well, Paul, I've been to your website, and I see that you have a few CDs out. Tell us about some of those. All right. Uh, we're talking about songwriting, and mm -hmm. I guess the, the CDs are my main outlet for my, my songwriting, sure. and, I, and I really like to uh, sort of use those as an avenue for my personal right. Expression and uh, one of the um, the first CD I made was called Swing Street, mm -hmm. and it was uh, eleven of twelve. The songs were originals, and uh, I wanted to uh, as it was the first CD I made, so I wanted to do a lot of the instrumental work myself. So sure. I did all the fiddle and guitar and mandolin wow. myself and and uh, vocals and that sort of thing. Uh, the second CD was called The Bloggrass Boys. It's a bluegrass CD, and I kind of combined the idea of blogging and music and I wrote Neat. some songs that were uh, topical, yeah. current event oriented and put together uh, a project uh, of that. That's the Bloggrass Boys. And the third CD I have is, is a Christmas CD. Aww. And one year I just got inspired to write Christmas songs. Yeah. And uh, that CD was the result and uh, there's some, uh, it's, it's a really wide range of material. Some of it's funny, some of it's satire, some mm -hmm. of it's uh, you know, serious and uh, and all three, um, I think, are really good. I'm really proud That's of them. That's Paul, do you have any advice for somebody who wants to move to Nashville or um, wants to become established in the music scene? Well, uh, the best thing to do is just get yourself down here yeah. and just jump in there with, with both feet. I sort of, uh, when I moved here originally, I was sort of, uh, you know, thinking, oh, well, it's going to be so hard. And, but, you know, the best thing would have been if I had just come five years earlier. Because yeah. then I'd have met more people and I'd have learned from some of the greatest, you know, players in mm -hmm. the world and writers in the world. And the best thing to do is just show up yeah. and, and be diligent, do your homework, um, get out there and, uh, and network. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, don't be afraid to approach people. Um, and uh, be persistent. Yeah, it, that's what it takes. It's just uh, it's a process. Mm -hmm. It's a long process. But uh, you know, if you have talent and you have um, dedication, I think it, it's a it's a doable proposition. Yeah. <laughs> Someone 
when you're home, she makes it all worthwhile. And she can lay it on me like it's going out of style. Dancing on the edge, I'm just dancing on the edge. I might act flirtatious, but I never strain, oh goodness gracious. Dancing on the edge, more like hanging from a ledge. Paul, what are some of the things that we can expect to see from you in the future? What's coming up? Well, I'm sort of stockpiling songs right now, as okay. it were, for a couple new projects. Yeah. There's going to be a bluegrass uh, CD in the near future, and there's going to be another swing CD in the near future. Mm. And um, I'm looking to, you know, promote some live appearances and that sort of thing, yeah. and to sort of get a little more established in that way. And, yeah. And, um, you know, just following the muse, I guess, would be the best awesome. answer, right? Well, Paul, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. It has been a pleasure. No problem. It's <laughs> been great.